I have an original Nintendo Entertainment System here, and it's got some problems. The outside is a little shabby, with some yellowing, as you can see. A ton of them are like this, though, and considering its age, it isn't too surprising. The connection points all look okay. Hard to get a good view of the game connector pins from out here, but I'm not seeing anything too alarming at a rough glance. Here we have The Legend of Zelda. What an amazing game. It would be a huge bummer if we found out we couldn't play it. So we'll anxiously plug in the console and make sure we're set to channel 3 here. Let's pop in the game and see what happens when we turn the system on. This thing is not working. We get this flashing red light and it does not boot the game. I tried the basics like jiggling the game around, cleaning the pins with alcohol, etc. But it was all to no avail. The 72 pin connector inside feels loose and there's barely any resistance when I insert or remove the game. Generally, the flashing red light means the console failed to authenticate the cartridge as being authorized by Nintendo. A poor connection to the game will cause this, so I'm fairly confident the 72 pin inside is the problem. As a sanity check, I'll pull in a known working Nintendo to make sure the game is good. Uh, it's black and white and we have no sound. I dinked around with this for way too long before thinking to try it on channel 4 on both the console and the TV. After doing that, it worked just fine. I'm not sure what the issue was with channel 3, but either way we've convinced ourselves of the problem and we'll get inside the broken unit to see if we can fix it. Compared to some of the other repairs on this channel, the NES is super easy to work on. To get started, we just need to remove the 6 Phillips screws around the perimeter. Flip it over, and the top shell comes right off. Now we'll take this shield off by removing these 7 screws. And then the game slot, which is held in place by these 6 screws. There's one more screw to get up here, and now we can remove the board. Need to unplug these 3 cables here. And when it's loose, we'll pull the metal shield off and take a look at the board. First, I want to point out the lockout chip on this console, which is right here. If you clip off the pin I'm pointing at, it will fix the flashing light issue in a lot of cases, because doing so interrupts the circuit involved in game authentication, so you won't get any false fails. I'm not going to mess with that chip, because wherever possible, I like to keep retro consoles like this one in the as-manufactured condition. So we're going to try to solve this by refurbishing the 72 pin connector, which we can slide off now with just a little effort. Next, I'm going to clean up the pads for the 72 pin connector. They might not look bad on the camera, but these things are dirty and oxidized. To clean them, I like to use a pencil eraser followed up with isopropyl alcohol. One thing you might notice is that all these pads are silver colored instead of gold like you might be used to seeing. Here they used a solder surface finish accomplished by a process called hot air solder leveling where the output is a thin and even coat of solder over all exposed copper surfaces on the board. This is cheaper than gold plating and works great as a soldering substrate, but it's more susceptible to oxidation with time. Now that those pads are nice and clean, we can focus our attention on the 72 pin connector. Focusing on the pins, it's hard to tell, but most or all of them are flattened as evidenced by the game having barely any resistance when we plugged it in earlier. So the pins aren't making good contact. Before dealing with that, I'll use another pencil eraser to remove any oxidation that might exist on the pin contacts. And we'll make sure we get all the debris out. Now I'll use a dental tool to individually bend each pin upwards so that they make better contact with the game cartridge later. It took a little bit of time to get the right angle and technique for this, but overall it's not too difficult. Here's what it looks like when we're done, and now the pins should be much closer to their intended position and make better contact with the game. I have things roughly pieced back together here for testing, and now I can definitely feel those pins are engaging on the game. It still doesn't look quite right when we turn it on. I can get it to work sometimes depending on how I plug the game in, but the inconsistencies here make it pretty much unplayable. I'm going to try another trick I've heard about for that 72 pin connector. We're boiling it. 
It might seem odd, but doing this is going to further clean the entire connector housing, including all the small crevices. It also acts as a mild heat treatment to the materials and may restore some rigidity in the pins or the plastic. I remove it from a rolling boil after about 20 minutes, and I see some debris dripping off onto the paper towel, which is a good sign that we're cleaning it. After rinsing and letting it cool, I flush it out further with alcohol, followed by blasting it with canned air to make sure I've really knocked out any problematic dirt or debris. Well, that's the last thing I can try, so I'm going to let this dry out and get everything back together to see if what we did was good. I already have the 72-pin connector plugged in the board, so I'll place the metal shield and finish the reassembly in the same way we took it apart. Moment of truth, can we play Zelda? Oh yeah, we sure can. We can even play Mario in any game we want now because the problem with that 72 pin has been resolved and we're getting reliable electrical contact to the game. Now it's still the same connector in here that already failed once, so we could certainly run into this same problem in the future, but I'm pretty confident this will be just as good or better than swapping in a new third-party 72 pin, since those are usually pretty low quality. Not to mention, we didn't have to spend any money, and that is something that just can't be beat. I'm so glad we got this one working. If you have a favorite memory with the original Nintendo, let me know in the comments. I hope this video helped you out, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.